A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook Storm. Agnes is now starting to move, the centre of Agnes anyway, is now starting to move into Southern Ireland. We will see the conditions that have been rather bleak this afternoon across parts, many parts of Ireland, South West England, South Wales. We will continue to see the conditions going downhill through the rest of today and into the overnight tonight, especially the further north you go. Now, as you can see here, this is the very latest visible satellite image captured on Weather Online um, of Storm Agnes. Now, a couple of interesting things to point out to you. As you can see here, the system now moving into Southern Ireland here. There's the shield of cloud that is now uh, spreading its way across the British Isles. Notice here, there's the centre of the system here, but we also have... Uh, not one, but two, even three other circulations on this chart here. It's a very busy weather story, and uh, I certainly encourage you to keep it right here on marfogenweather.com. If you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We will be looking today at some of the finer meteorological explanation to what's going on within the atmosphere, or I'll certainly attempt to do that anyway, with the help of a few other folks as well. But you can see here, there's another circulation up to the northwest of uh, Agnes. So Agnes is here. We've got another feature here. And then we've got another one right down at the very bottom left-hand corner of this loop here. So not one, but four circulations at play at the moment across the Northeast Atlantic Ocean. So, of course, a few days ago, I spoke about some of the dynamics with regards to Agnes's development. We had... A piece of energy essentially split away from the northern flank of Tropical Storm Ophelia, which made landfall on the mid-Atlantic coast of the United States back over the weekend. That piece of energy broke off. It caught a very strong jet stream further south than you would typically expect to see during mid-September, late September. But basically, the northern flank of Ophelia was affected by a strong jet stream and that piece of energy in the northern side of the circulation split off the main portion of the circulation of Ophelia. It then got swept out over the North Atlantic. And as it crossed the North Atlantic, it then moved from the southern side to the northern side of the jet, the, the, the rapidly developing side, the cool side of the jet. Now, that basically meant that it, um, it entered the right entrance region of the jet stream and then exit the left exit region of the jet stream. And as explained here by on a Twitter feed by um, by Dan Harris of the Met Office, the left, left exit is one of the two main development zones of a jet that is not accelerating. So it's decelerating and accelerating there, of course, that allows these systems to deepen and congregate bundle their energy. And of course, you've also got uh, warm properties within that system. It, it broke off a tropical sourced area of low pressure. So it maintained some warmth within the, the area of low pressure itself. And of course, we've got a warmer than average Atlantic. That also has to get taken into in consideration. A big differential in temperature within the atmosphere itself. Hence why we've had quite a strong west to east jet stream transiting the North Atlantic Ocean colder to the north and very warmer to the south, of course. But of course, as he explains, um, here the pressure gradient aloft quickly reduces, but the Coriolis linked to the flow strength takes time to do so. This causes upper divergence and mass loss in the air column lowering pressure. So thanks to Dan for explaining that because I wasn't entirely sure myself. This is an interesting tweet here by uh, Stuart Markham. And you can see here how the jet stream is actually, in, a, in essence, shaped by the system itself. And it's very, very interesting. These rapidly deepening areas of low pressure here uh, with tropical, some element of tropical characteristics actually involved as well. It's always fascinating to see the development stage of these systems. Now, what is quite interesting and relatively rare with regards to Agnes is that we've got the perfect meteorological ingredients coming together to produce what is known as a Shapiro-Kaiser cyclone. 
So what actually is a Shapiro? That's probably the best pronunciation. Shapiro Kaiser cyclone. They are relatively rare, and I want to show you uh, a little bit more about this here. So a Shapiro Kaiser cyclone typically forms over water. This is off a video here by David Stang, based somewhere in the United States, and a. Uh, I just kind of freeze frame this this uh, image of the video, showing that there's a, a a cold front fracture that develops within the circulation itself. Once you get these systems uh, bombing out, rapid cyclogenesis, bombogenesis. They, these are various terms that are used for systems that rapidly develop and deepen over the open ocean. Now that's exactly what was seen with storm agnes some three four five hundred miles to the southwest of ireland here the system went from you know nearly a thousand millibars into the 980s 970s and possibly the upper 960s and millibars at the peak during the overnight period tonight as agnes then transits across ireland northern ireland and the uk bringing a spell of very heavy rainfall gusty winds winds in excess of 80 miles an hour i think it confined to the coastal areas, very um, exposed coastal areas of Ireland, England and Wales, and possibly southwest Scotland. Uh, inland areas, 50 uh, miles per hour is quite possible. But as this system is focusing a lot of its attention, you've got actually warm air that's wrapping around the centre of the low itself. Now, this is where I think the tropics come into play a little bit, and the origin of this system is quite important. But you've also got unusually warm waters in the Atlantic, and we've also got the right ingredients within the atmosphere itself to deliver all this uh, ingredients coming all together perfectly. So the northern fringe of the cold front is weakened or fractured by differential rotation. Warm air wraps around the center of the circulation here. Uh, strong mid-level winds can descend can descend down to the surface, forming a sting jet. Winds within the sting jet can exceed 60 miles an hour and can pose significant threat to mariners and indeed places on land itself. Now, if I go skip a little bit more, you can actually see an interesting diagram on this video and it looks at the system itself. So notice here in this image, we've got a bent back front uh, known as a... As a, a, a semi-fractured front we've also got the cold front that's detached from the center of the low itself and as i skip a little bit further on you can see here where it shows where warm air getting wrapped around the center of that circulation itself further pulls away the cold front and it's right here between the center of the low and the co detached cold front where a sting jet can develop and that is a transfer of very powerful winds within the mid levels of the atmosphere that can descend like collapsing air descends down towards the low levels and that's of course what happened back in the 1987 storm uh, in in london and southeast england where we had the development of a sting jet and then um, if we go back you can see here the the hook as this system became very mature you can see the warmer getting wrapped around in this visible satellite image and you can see right here uh you know kind of resembling a, a, a tail of a scorpion there's the potential formation of a sting jet um shown here in this uh, shapiro kaiser circulation here so a relatively rare it doesn't happen every year uh, development of this type of uh, system here fascinating meteorology and play of course and the modeling themselves actually seen the potential development of a sting jet here now if you notice here a core of super strong winds in excess of 193 kilometers per hour which is 119 miles per hour by the way seen on the southern flank of this system so the model itself is seeing this a fractured coal front, the pulling away of the coal front detached from the center of the circulation. Warm air gets wrapped around the circulation, and right here on that southern flank, where you typically have in mid latitude circulations the strongest winds, 
this is where you could transfer some of that energy from mid levels down to low levels. Luckily, thankfully, this is not a 1987 example. It is hundreds of miles off the Irish coast uh, when this potential development took place during the overnight period. And fortunately for everybody else, this is uh, peaking and in a weakening state. Another nice um, visible satellite image of the circulation in motion here. This is when it was reaching uh, maturity. There's the development potentially of the sting jet, the detachment of the cold front. So fascinating meteorology in play. And I just wanted to spend today looking at that in some very, very uh, significant detail here. It really is uh, amazing stuff, isn't it? When you look at the overall atmosphere at play here. So this is the current satellite image. So Agnes is now in a weakening state as it transits across Ireland, the Irish Sea, the UK here, but doesn't mean that we won't get uh, very powerful winds as well here. This is a look at the latest uh, radar image here of weather online. And you can see here the shield of heavy precipitation moving uh, northwards ahead of the center of low pressure itself. So the center itself is essentially right down here in the southwest cor corner of Ireland. It's making that kind of northeast track up through Pearl Bay, Northern Ireland and into southern Scotland during the evening tonight and overnight tonight. Strongest winds will transfer north and we will see the worst conditions across the far north by the time we reach uh, early hours of tomorrow morning. This is the latest pressure chart of medio seal and you can see here the center of um of agnes here uh, with the strongest winds this tight squeeze nice of ours on that southeastern flank of the low itself so the strongest winds possibly in excess of 100 miles an hour offshore then the center of the low itself potentially down into the upper 960s millibars i don't know exactly the depth of the system and its peak but you notice here that the model is actually indicating 970 millibars here. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how deep this system got. But it looks as if around about maybe kind of 10 to 10, 10 to 9 this morning. Agnes then peaked in intensity. Very strong southerly winds to the east of the circulation over Ireland, Northern Ireland. You notice a lack of winds really across the British Isles at this stage. Now, as we play through the loop, Notice the center of the circulation is now starting to weaken slightly and the pressure is now at 980 millibars or above as the center of the circulation reaches this the, 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 the Midwest coast of, of Ireland here, the Atlantic coast of Ireland. So, of course, we're then transferring the strongest winds to the east here, so up over the eastern side of Ireland, up through Northern Ireland, western side of the UK as well. Very strong southerly winds through the Irish Sea, probably causing issues with uh, shipping, etc., etc. So, uh, and we'll continue to watch this space as we go through the remainder of this afternoon here. Strongest winds reported according to Meteo Seal, 66 miles per hour, actually at Cairngorm. That is the strongest wind gusts. Uh, Isles of Scilly, 63. Uh, Annick Moor to the, uh, near um, Fort William. We've got 60 miles an hour. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what the peak wind gust of this system is as we go forward here. And you can see here warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the general vicinity. I hope that was of interest to you with regards to a little bit more scientific explanation with regards to Storm Agnes. We'll have more details in terms of uh, you know, what the heaviest rainfall was, what the strongest wind gust was in tomorrow's video. We're also going to look, of course, at the Man Julian Oscillation progressing through the Pacific Ocean. We're also going to look um, at the latest with regards to the Indian Ocean Dipole, the El Nino, some more winter chat coming up in the next wee while as well. So stay tuned to here on martelandweather.com. Lots of things coming up and I'll be back again tomorrow with more. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Stay safe wherever you are. Let me know on, on Twitter, even the comment section below in the video today what your conditions are like wherever you are as well. Is Storm Agnes having a big impact where you are? Is it overhyped? Is it overplayed? Let me know in the comments section below. I would love to hear your feedback. Stay tuned.